coming up on today's show. Customer deliveries of the Ford F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck finally begin in the US. New SEC filings from Faraday Future shows that as of now, it only has 401 reservations for the FF91, far less than it had previously suggested. And a study of car buyers suggests that legacy automakers might have a hidden leg up on startups in the race to market. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TEN or Transport Evolved News. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get going today, don't forget to check you've hit the subscribe button, dinged the bell and set your alert preferences for this channel. Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport and get the help that you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And if you are in the US, don't forget to put Fully Charged Live USA into your calendars. It takes place in San Diego, California on September 10th and 11th. So head to fullycharged.live forward slash US to find out more. And we all hope to see you there. It has been more than a year since Ford first unveiled the F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck at a special event in Dearborn, Michigan, which also means for a whole year, plenty of eager reservation holders have been patiently waiting for their chances to get theirs. And this week, the very first F-150 Lightning was officially delivered to Nicholas Schmidt of Standish, Michigan. The truck, a platinum trim variant, arrived at the dealership earlier this week and Schmidt headed off there on Thursday to pick it up. An existing EV owner, Schmidt already has a Tesla Model 3 in his garage and as the CTO of a grid optimization startup, he's reportedly happy to be replacing his gas-powered F-150 with the all-electric version. Having previously put down a deposit on a Tesla Cybertruck and a Rivian R1T, it was the F-150 Lightning that arrived first, something that apparently his wife was very pleased about since she hates the design of the Cybertruck. Congratulations to them both. Israeli battery firm Stordot has been increasing its reach and investor base this year, with plenty of big names, including Volvo, Daimler and Polestar, making investments. And this week, Polestar and Stordot announced a strategic partnership to investigate using Stordot's silicon-dominant lithium-ion batteries in future Polestar models. Stordot, which recently demonstrated its battery technology live online during an event in Israel, says it will have its 105 battery charge technology ready for mass production in as little as two years' time. Right now, many major automakers are testing Stordot sample cells produced on the company's small-scale production line in their own vehicles. And according to Polestar's CEO, if the pilot project it is currently working on with Stordot is successful, the firm wants to implement Stordot's revolutionary charging tech in its vehicles from 2026 onwards. Last week, I told you on this channel how the majority of legacy automakers will most likely fail to meet the required targets set out by the Paris Climate Accord. These targets focus on reducing global emissions in order to keep global warming temperature rises to below 1.5 degrees C. And many of you were unsurprised that Big Auto was failing. This week, we have another failing group to add to the list. Yep, big oil. In a new study by Oil Change International, every major US and European oil and gas company's climate change pledges were examined, and every single one failed to come close to an alignment with the 1.5 degrees C temperature goal set out in the Paris Agreement. They may be spending billions on flashy new ads telling us they're working on cleaner sources of fuel, but most companies are rated as being grossly insufficient or insufficient, and ExxonMobil and Chevron are failing to score above grossly insufficient across the board. I'll link to the report below. At CES 2016, Faraday Future unveiled a concept single-seat race car in the form of the FF Zero. It was outlandish and, I know this because I was there, was also not a functioning vehicle. 
One year later, at CES 2017, the company unveiled what it said would be its first car, the FF91. Unveiled at a special event to whoops from employees of the company, the vehicle suffered some significant on-stage problems, but nevertheless, a few months later, Faraday Future claimed it had more than 14,000 reservations for the same. Earlier this year, the troubled company came under the spotlight of the SEC after allegations were made that it was misleading investors. And this week, thanks to a new SEC filing, we learned how much Faraday Future has been spreading bovine byproduct. As of the end of the first quarter this year, the company has just 401 paid reservations. What's more, according to one short seller of the company, 80% of those orders appear to have come from a company that may be a Faraday Future subsidiary. We have always been cautious of this company. Now I think you can see why. Euro NCAP has officially revealed the latest slew of crash test results for 2022 model year cars, and there are three five-star recipients in the EV world. The Kia EV6, Renault Megane E-Tech and Volvo XC40 Recharge all came out top with five-star ratings, with the Volvo XC40 Recharge coming out top overall with best results of the three, sitting at 92%, 89%, 70% and 89% ratings respectively in adult occupant, child occupant, pedestrian and safety assistance categories. While the Renault Megane E-Tech fared worst in adult protection, scoring 85%, it was the EV6 which fared worst in pedestrian protection, scoring 64%. It's worth noting that while five stars are becoming the norm, we don't talk about the Renault Zoe, pedestrian safety scores are most likely to be a car's poorest performing area. It's not always the case, but usually so. Back in 2013, I got behind the wheel of the BYD E6 for the first time at a test track in the UK, and I have to say that I was not impressed by its handling or performance. But in the nine plus years since, BYD has really changed its quality and EV smarts, and this week it unveiled a brand new car that I think will get the seal of approval from buyers, because it's called the seal. Starting from the equivalent of $31,709, the BYD Seal Rear Wheel Drive Elite offers a claimed Chinese test cycle range of 342 miles, 550 kilometers, and a 150 kilowatt electric motor. There are a total of four models on offer, but the range topping long range all wheel drive variant, which is $43,300 equivalent, claims a 650 kilometer, 404 mile range in China and a sprint time of 3.8 seconds. It's also pretty good looking. What do you think? It's all too easy in the EV world to forget that brands EV fans show an interest in is very different to the brands that mainstream buyers show interest in. But a new study this week from Escalant EV Forward polling mainstream car buyers on their opinions of EVs show how the two groups think can be very different. It shows that outside the EV world, more than one third, 35% of participants said they would favor purchasing their first electric car from a quote, well-established automaker, while just 24% said they'd look to buy their first electric vehicle from an EV startup. Interestingly, this survey seems to put Tesla in with Rivian and other EV brands in the startup segment, which frankly I'd argue Tesla most certainly isn't anymore, but it does show that while EV fans may shun legacy auto, most customers are going to go with what they know. Volkswagen Group CEO Dr. Herbert Diess has helped steer Volkswagen away from the horrendous wreck that was the Dieselgate scandal and towards a brighter future. And while he doesn't have the full support of some of the old guard members of the Volkswagen board, he certainly helped the company head towards an all-electric future. Unlike many automaker CEOs, Dies hasn't dismissed Tesla either, even meeting with Elon Musk multiple times in recent years to talk EVs. But this week on CNBC's Squawk Box Europe at the World Economic Forum in Switzerland, Dies reiterated that Volkswagen's goal still includes a plan to catch up with and potentially overtake Tesla in the EV 
EV marketplace by 2025. Praising Tesla and Musk for all they've done thus far, Dees appears to believe that Tesla's USP is starting to wane as it rushes to bring new factories up to speed, not to mention launch multiple new products. It's going to be interesting to see the reaction from Tesla and Musk on this one. Talking of Tesla, its Advanced Battery Research Division, as founded in 2016, has helped Tesla stay at the forefront of battery research. Led by Professor Jeff Dunn and a team of researchers at Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, where my mum is from, the battery research design team test new battery cell chemistries to make electric car batteries stronger, last longer, and go further. And this week, a new paper was published to the Journal of the Electric Electrochemical Society detailing the team's latest research, a new potential nickel-based battery cell design that could last up to 100 years in the right environment. Said to be comparable to current LFP battery cells in terms of charging and energy density, this new chemistry could pave the way for grid-tied battery storage solutions that could literally last generations. Imagine your children's children using a storage system that you saw getting installed. I don't know about you, I think that's pretty cool. Back in 2017, British adventurer Chris Ramsey and his wife entered the history books by becoming the first people to enter and complete the London Mongol Rally in an electric car, driving from London to Mongolia completely unsupported in a lightly modified Nissan Leaf in just 55 days. Since then, Chris has broken some other records, including riding an electric bicycle the length of the UK. But this week, he officially announced his new adventure, driving from pole to pole in an EV. Taking an adventure-prepared Nissan Aria E-Force from the Arctic all the way through North, Central and South America before crossing to the Antarctic, the car will feature modified suspension and upgraded tyres, but its journey through the Americas will be joined by an unmodified Aria. I've known about this trip for what feels like forever, and I'm hopeful that we can catch Chris for a brief chat on his way south. The trip starts next year. We'll dive headlong into our short shorts in a second, but first, a reminder that tea is here because of the kind donations of people just like you. Every penny we earn from YouTube ad revenue, third-party production work, and support from you guys on Patreon, YouTube, Kofi, and our swag store goes to directly growing the channel and paying everyone else's salary. It would be super nice if I could start paying myself too, so if you're able, we would love it if you'd consider supporting the channel. Right now, less than one-tenth of a percent of the show's viewers support us, so let's raise that a little bit. And if you already do, thank you. On to the short shorts. The Oregon portion of the West Coast Electric Highway, a chain of electric vehicle charging stations joining Canada to Mexico through the US, has just added electrical bicycle charging infrastructure in the form of 110 volt outlets at all of its locations, just in time for some summer two-wheeled fun. The latest version of Europe's tough emissions requirement standards, Euro 7, will be unveiled in just a few months' time. And in addition to dealing with tailpipe emission standards, it's also going to implement regulations concerning brake dust emissions requirements. Lucid is recalling a total of 1,117 Lucid Air sedans to address a faulty wiring harness issue that may not have been properly secured in affected cars. Owners are being notified and affected cars will receive a new wiring harness free of charge. A Volkswagen ID4 GTX driven by adventurer Rainier Zietlow has set a new world record by driving 19,000 feet up a volcano. In doing so, it broke the previous elevation record for an electric vehicle, setting a new one at 19,081 feet, or 5,816 meters. Tesla has officially begun the expansion process for Giga Berlin by submitting plans with a local municipality to expand its factory onto a newly acquired 100 hectare plot east of its current location. We'll hear initial reactions to the application very soon. Last week, the US EPA unveiled its process of helping schools across the US transition to electric buses, allocating 500 million in funding from a total of 5 billion set aside by the US Infrastructure Act, which will be sent to high need location agencies, tribal schools, and rural areas first. 
many years ago now, Rivian caused quite a stir by showcasing its R1T executing a tank turn, turning itself around on a dirt road. Now Mercedes-Benz has done the same, showcasing its EQG prototype, doing its own take on the crafty 360 thanks to a quad motor drivetrain. While regenerative braking is fantastic, most EVs behave differently when their batteries are full as there's no space left in the battery pack to store extra charge. But this week Tesla rolled out a new software update that will mimic regenerative braking by using friction brakes when the battery pack is full. And frankly, I want every other automaker to do the same. Back in 2019, we were present at the LA Auto Show when Volkswagen unveiled its ID Space Vision concept. And this week, we learned that the upcoming production car based on the same will be known as the ID7 Tourer Estate. Honestly, I quite liked Space Vision. Baidu's electric vehicle startup, Jidu, is readying itself to roll out its first electric vehicle in a few weeks' time. And this week, we were treated to more teasers from the company. Since Jidu is focused on autonomous EVs, the name, a robocar, makes sense, even if it is a little unimaginative. Tesla's new software update, in addition to adjusting brake behavior, now includes improved range prediction algorithms that take into account crosswind, headwind, humidity, and ambient temperature. And it also adds the ability to link your personal streaming media accounts to your driver profile. Traditionally, getting your motorcycle or scooter license required learning on an internal combustion engine model, even if you just wanted to ride electric. But in France, a training centre outside of Paris is now offering electric-only training classes for those who want them. Bank of America and Electrify America have announced that EA will be doubling the number of Bank of America branch locations across the US where EA stations will be located. By the end of next year, 90 Bank of America branches will offer EA DCFC. BMW Brilliance Automotive, BMW's subsidiary partnership in China, has announced the opening of a closed-loop recycling operation for recycling the nickel, lithium and cobalt found in EV battery packs. It reduces the emissions of those metals by 70% compared to freshly mined metals. Tesla's Giga Shanghai has been operating on what's called a closed-loop system for some time, with staff sleeping in the factory due to China's strict COVID-19 lockdowns. Now, new reporting says it will continue that way until mid-June, with workers quarantined at a military camp near the factory. To honour the Hockenheim racetrack, where Porsche has been testing its cars since 2019, the company has unveiled a special edition of the Porsche Taycan GTS, resplendent in stone grey special paint and wearing special edition badging throughout. Food service distribution company Psycho Corporation has announced its intent to buy nearly 800 all-electric Class 8 Freightliner eCascadia trucks from Daimler Trucks North America as part of its plans to electrify 35% of its fleet by 2030. It's the biggest order for the truck yet. Just a few weeks after it confirmed it would be bringing the Scout nameplate back to life as an all-electric pickup truck and rugged off-road SUV, Volkswagen is reportedly already on the hunt for a location to build the factory in the US where said vehicles will be made. Continuing its promised Tech Talk podcasts, where it showcases how its vehicles are made and what makes them different from the rest, Lucid has published episode 2, focusing on the interior space of the Lucid Air sedan. It's well worth it, so make sure you get a look. A Hong Kong-based company called C3 Strom has unveiled a new electric bicycle that is frankly more like a moped and has a massive battery and equally massive specs, called the Astro. You can get up to 1.04 kilowatt hours of battery capacity and 60 miles, 95 kilometers of electric range. A new study from Cambridge Mobile Telematics claims that electric vehicles change driver behaviour, noting that Tesla drivers are 50% less likely to crash when driving their Tesla than any other vehicle, unless they're accelerating, in which case the risks are much, much higher. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, working with Zambia, has signed a cooperation agreement to build their own battery supply chain rather than just be exporters of raw battery materials. It's not clear, though, if this plan includes measures to tackle the human right violations in the DRC.
Tesla has finally followed through on its promise of building a supercharger location with diner, drive-in, movie theaters, and more. The planned Hollywood supercharger proposed will include 29 V3 superchargers and a two-story diner. When we know more, we'll share it. Nano One, a company specializing in high-performance lithium-ion battery cathode materials, has acquired Johnson Mathy battery materials. While you've probably never heard of it, the latter is the only LFP cathode production facility in the whole of North America. As countries around the world shun Russian oil experts, Bloomberg New Energy Finance says that plug-in vehicles are avoiding about 3% of the world's global oil demand, equal to one-fifth of Russia's total oil exports. Seems like another reason to plug in. General Motors has patented a new charging system which it says will allow for two charging stations to charge its vehicle battery packs at the same time. It could theoretically speed up lower power level 2 charging, but doesn't appear to offer dual rapid charging. Buick China has teased two photographs of a new upcoming all-electric concept vehicle that will be revealed in the next few months. Called the Electra X, it is the first all-electric Buick model to be built on the GM Ultium platform, but it's unlikely to go on sale in the US. Stellantis and Samsung SDI have announced that they will begin construction on a brand new battery production facility in Indiana worth 2.5 billion US dollars. The production facility will begin making cells in three years with a total annual capacity of 23 gigawatt hours. A Tesla owner who ran a red light and crashed his Model S into a Honda Civic at speed in Los Angeles, killing both Civic occupants, will stand trial in LA County for two counts of vehicular manslaughter. According to prosecutors, the defendant was using autopilot at the time. Four hours after the order books opened online for the Cadillac Lyric EV, all 2023 model year allocations have been spoken for. This is according to Cadillac, but we don't know just how many vehicles are initially up for grabs, so it's difficult to gauge just how high demand actually was. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Rightly or wrongly, a large proportion of the world seems obsessed with how far you can go per charge in an electric vehicle, even if your bladder range is probably only a few hours. Well, this week, the folks over at the Kilowatts YouTube channel decided to try and see just how far they could make a Lucid Air Dream Edition range travel per charge. The longest leg EV you can buy today, the EPA rating of the Lucid Air is 520 miles, 836 kilometers. But Ryan and his buddies managed to eke out 687.4 miles or 1,106.2 kilometers. It is a new record for a production car on public roads, but not quite near the 1,000 mile record set on private tracks by specially prepared EVs. It is impressive, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend you try and replicate this yourself. And finally, regulars to this channel will know that both I and Kate Walden Elliott have something of a soft spot for the original Land Rover. I grew up on a dairy farm and Kate had friends with one, so we've both spent some significant time in and around them. And when I drove a prototype Land Rover Defender with all-electric drivetrain nearly a decade ago, I've got to admit to falling in love. In fact, I think I might even consider trading in the F-150 Lightning for one. And now UK conversion specialist ECCs are making me much more tempted to do that, thanks to the unveiling of a drop-in conversion kit for original Land Rover Defenders that allow you to replace the internal combustion engine with Tesla-derived drivetrain and battery pack. I said Defenders, I mean Series 1, 2, and of course 3 as well. Right now, ECC is only selling the kits to other conversion businesses, but hints that ultimately it might sell the kits to end users too. I want one of these so hard because, well, Yum! But sadly, I fear it'll be out of my price range by quite a bit. Pouty face. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, a huge thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. 
And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for this channel and our second channel, Transport Evolve Take Two. And if you're not already a channel member or Patreon supporter, please consider becoming one. You can send us a tip through Ko-fi or buy something from our cool swag store. And if you liked what you saw today, do consider adding a super thanks to your comment. It's super easy to do and it all helps our channel grow. I'll be back next week with another Roundup show, but there will also be awesome content throughout the week for you to enjoy. Until then, enjoy your weekend, and as always, keep evolving.